If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with T1 Stoneforge Mystic, T1 Baby Bear, and her shirt that says, I don't know that you can see it well with a fold on it, but it says Wild About Daddy, and playing with her lay. We're having a, a good summer day here in Georgia. Uh, and I wanted to talk, really quickly, uh, about a deck idea that I had. Um, because of a card that's been spoiled in Eldritch Moon, by the time this gets uploaded, this will be a few days ago, uh, I strongly suspect. <laughs> so, it's Eldritch Evolution. Now, before I get into the card, can you drop that? A little bit of background, just a little bit. Why was Birthing Pod banned in Modern? Not why was it, or rather I should say, why was it ban-worthy? Banned may be a separate question, but why was it ban-worthy? Because when you think of it just in terms of sheer card advantage, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? You're using the card itself, that's a minus one. You sacrifice a creature, that's a minus two. So you're net, not minus two, I mean. And then you get another creature. That's a minus one, and as many times as you use it, you'll still be at that, you'll be maintaining that minus one. But of course, of course, the card is broken. Well, yeah, broken probably. Because you're actually getting, well for a number of reasons. One, you're able to abuse when it dies or when it enters the battlefield triggers. Secondly, you're getting a bigger creature each time. It goes up one CMC, you get to go up the ladder. You start out with a Noble Hierarch, and by the time you're done, you have an Archangel of Thune, for instance. But imagine if Birthing Pod only lets you do it once. Say, you had to sacrifice it as well. Would it have been playable? Maybe. Probably not. It loses to Artifact Hate, it loses to Stony Silence specifically. Uh, you're only going up one CMC. You don't have a lot of flexibility. It has to be plus one. Probably not worth it, ultimately. But, imagine if you had a card like Eldritch Evolution. Now, Eldritch Evolution, if you're only going to use it once, is a perfectly reasonable card. It lets you go up to CMC. It gives you more flexibility because it's X plus two or less. Where X, of course, is the CMC of the sacrificed creature. So, for example, if I sacrifice a Noble Hierarch, I can get up to a Kitchen Finx, but I don't have to. I can get Malira, I can get Anafenza. You get the idea. So, if we're only going to use it once, then Eldritch Evolution is probably better. Even then, maybe not strictly so, it does force you into playing green. You know, at least with Birthing Pod, you had the option to play other colors and not have to play green. For instance, I played a deck called Delve Pod, uh, now this was when the newest set was Cons of Tarkir, so we didn't have Gurmog Angler or Tassiger or Sipsid Muckrackers, I think it was. But we, in any case, we didn't have all of the crazy cards that I wanted to abuse with it. Uh, you played a mono black control game, well, not mono black, you had Abrupt Decay, and you just control the field, get cards into your graveyard, play a Delve creature. And lo and behold, eventually you get out Birthing Pod, and you delve either your Tomb Stalker or your Shambling Attendants. That's right, we played Shambling Attendants. <laughs> uh, just because we had to. In order to get out your Nine Drops, and you had in the deck, I ran Iona, <laughs> Shield of Emeria. You can see where this is going. I ran Blazing Archon, and I ran Inkwell Leviathan, who always seems sort of underwhelming to me. Probably needed to be in the sideboard. Um... And those were, those were great. I would like to revive the deck using Eldritch Evolution for a number of reasons. Firstly, I can go and get Iona and Blazing Archon with seven CMC creatures, and that includes Gurmog Angler. And I think that that in and of itself improves the deck tremendously. Uh, Gurmog Angler, compared to, even just compared to, say, a Tombstalker, where black black is the minimum you have to pay. 
it lets me leave control elements open more readily. It makes it more likely to be cast quickly because I only need four mana, uh, one for the Gurmal Gangler and three for Eldritch Evolution, uh, to go off on that turn instead of five with Tombstalker. There are other options. Shambling Attendant as a 3-5 Death Touch is pretty bad. You don't want to play something like that. Before I move on though, let me say that in the description of this video is a Google Doc that has a list of uh, cards that you can use both as sacrifices and as the actual targets themselves. And there are a number of ways that you can run this deck if you're wanting to do the black green control strategy that I mentioned. Unfortunately, you only have Gurmog Angler as your CMC7 Delve creature. That's the only one. Uh, if you go lower, you can get Tasker and Hooting Mandrels, but then you can't get Iona and Blazing Archon. You can still get Grizzlebrand, you can get Platinum Empyrean, you can get Platinum Angel. There's a whole list down in the description. Um, but you can't go and get um, the ones that shut the game down most readily. Oh, you can also get, I think, I'm almost 100% sure Elish Norn is CMC 8. So if you play the Tassiger Hooting Mandrels, uh, you play that game, you can get um, you can get Elish Norn. You can't get Iona though. Uh, so what I would like to do is I would like to play Gurmog Angler, so Tombstalker Shambling Attendants, uh, Sibsig Mudrackers, one or some combination of those, but definitely the Angler. Um, if you just do this, though, your deck will lose to Rest in Peace. You'll lose to Graveyard Hate. Uh, well, you won't necessarily lose, but you'll have to control for a much longer amount of time before you can go off. And this is crucial. So, in the list below, I have some affinity cards. And by affinity, I mean specifically affinity for land type. There's, for example, there's Dross Golem Affinity for Swamps, and it is a 5 mana, but not actually 5 mana because of Affinity for Swamps, uh, with Fear. Unfortunately, it's only 5, which means I can only get up to 7, which pretty much means Platinum Angel. There are other options, but until you get to 8 and 9, you won't get things that are as good. The only one that's CMC 7 is Tangle Golem. Now, Tangle Golem has affinity for Forest, and if we're already thinking of playing a black-green control strategy, well, you can try to control for a bit longer and go into um, uh, Tangle Golem. Downsides to this, you must use... I, I say you must. You are highly incentivized to make all of your forest, all of your lands, either forest or fetch lands that go and get forest. So, it's more like green splashing black for the control elements. And this makes cards like Sign in Blood not as good. You're instead going to go for Knight's Whisper. Geth's Verdict isn't as good. You're instead going to go for Cruel Edict. Uh, that sort of thing. You get the idea. That all being the case, you don't have to play a control deck. Another that uh, I've seen done before is you play, I say I've seen, Travis Wu has brought it up before, although not quite the same way that I like to do it, which is that you use as your base creatures Allosaurus Rider, which is a effectively zero mana. It's a seven CMC, but you play it for free uh, by pitching two green cards in order to get out a creature whose power and toughness is one plus the number of lands you control. And that's fine. Um, you also play Tangle Golem, also CMC 7. And because they're both 7, they let you get everything that's up to CMC 9 that you have. Did you drop it again? Let's go get it. <laughs> oh dear, you just dropped her lay, that's all. Alright, let, let me know next time. Uh, you can try to, what I would like to do given that, is play a bit of a, a ramp deck. Playing cards like Search for Tomorrow, or uh, what's the the rampant growth that goes and gets everything but a forest? It's a it gets a mountain, island, swamp, or plains. It's been in Return to Ravnica and Original Ravnica. Um, Search the city is that it? Um, I don't know. For whatever reason, I can't think of it. But you you know what I'm on about. 
and I just gave you everything about it. Um, so you can go and get one of those. Rampant growth, of course. Just anything as such to try to ramp yourself out and then play the Eldritch Evolution as quickly as you can. Uh, this lets you get the Tangle Golem out sooner. This lets you get the Allosaurus Rider bigger, uh, which usually isn't necessary, but it can be a beat-down creature in the deck um, if you need to. You don't have to win through Eldritch Evolution. You can win just by beating down with big creatures. It's not preferable, obviously, you know, but you can. And then you play cards to cycle through your deck like Manamorphos, um, because it's green. Ah! Uh, you can also splash for blue to try to find the combo. Cards like Serum Visions, you get the idea. <sighs> so, that is Eldritch Evolution, the way that I see it. I very much like this card. I would like to revive Delvepod using, what would we call it, like... Delvolution? Deldritch Evolution? That feels like I'm working on my dad jokes. They, they make sense, but... Uh, or maybe they work, I don't know. Uh, Deldritch, Evo Deldritch Evolution? Something like that, you get the idea. Uh, Delpog was actually my favorite homebrew, including Infect homebrews that I've ever made, and unfortunately it never got to see anywhere near its full potential because Birthing Pod had to be banned before we got Tasker, Gurmog Angler, and Mudrackers. So that all being the case, uh, this helps me to sort of revive it. I want to be able to play this kind of strategy and you know, lock out my opponent with an Iona or something like that. Maybe the creatures that I would run if I had CMC 7 or greater for my uh, targets, my sacrifices. Iona, Elish Norn, Grizzlebrand, Blazing Archon, some combination of those. Um, probably Blazing Archon in the sideboard. Um, I, I'm tempted to say maybe Grizzlebrand goes in the sideboard, because whereas Elish Norn and Iona and Blazing Archon keep you from losing, Grizzlebrand is there to make you win, but if you're already down for whatever reason, that doesn't work quite so well. Uh, so for example, if your opponent is set to kill you next turn, Grizzlebrand may not be enough, whereas an Iona or an Elish Norn can lock them out of the game. Iona for combo and control, Elish Norn for aggro and midrange. So that's it for me. I will see you later. Take care. Do you want to say bye-bye to the wonderful people? You're all your adoring fans. T1 Stoneforge Mystic, T1 Baby Bear. Stop dropping it! Okay, we'll see you later. Bye-bye! Okay, let me get this back to her. Ah. Actually, before I let you go, let's put this around your neck. Show off how hurtful you can be. Here we go. <gasps> Yay! You're colorful. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Evangeline. Evangeline. Say bye-bye to everyone. <laughs> We're gonna get our nap. We're gonna get our nap. Bye-bye. Hi! -bye.